this together. All right. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, please put any questions into the chat if you have them. And uh, Tracy will kind of stop me along the way if you need something kind of explained or want to look at it. Uh, also, please let me know about like zooming in if I need to zoom in a little bit clearer uh, so that you can see stuff. Okay. So Jean's question had to do with like, how do you get started? Um, where do you kind of, what comes first? You know, it's like the chicken or the egg kind of thing. And um, can we make sure that everyone's muted too, please, um, Tracy, at this time? Thanks. So I'm going to share my Whoops. Um, so I, can everyone see a publisher, Microsoft publisher, it says header on it. Give me a thumbs up if you do. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, I like to doodle and stuff. So I, usually I'll take a piece of paper and kind of just draw out stuff. So you've like met with the client, you, uh, have talked about some ideas they might, you know, you did, you had them do a little bit of homework of like what, what you, what they like, what they don't. Um, most websites have a basic format um, or a, a template as we, you know, we're going to use that word a lot. And so what I did was I went into my Microsoft publisher is something online that is, is easy to add blocks, right? Because everything is a, is kind of blocks, containers, groups, uh, those words, are some other things that we put in. So, you know, we have a header at the top. We might have an image that will have that H1 heading. There might be some more wording within that picture uh, the image that I have as a background. And then we, you know, we might have different groups or sections of the about, um, either about the business, the services that it, it provides, um, or if it's a, a like a, my website design business, it's about me, um, a little bit about uh, my background, things like that, um, a section for testimonials. So, you know, people like to see that. That might be a section that your client would like to see. Um, and you're building these blocks so that then you can take that and start creating these. Um, and then you have the footer at the bottom. So, you know, this is a very basic uh, template of that. Another one that I've started using is Figma and I use the free version. Okay. And um, for some, got a copy of the 2023 theme. I don't remember how I got it, so I can't link it, but I'll see if I can find it later and link it within the um, meetup comments. And this is another way that you can kind of the next step, you know, or if you are this a kind of designer that likes this kind of um, um, tool to use, you can create your home page, okay? And then you can set it up to look exactly like it's gonna look, you know, kind of thing. Oops. And you can pull this over. So we, we have the um, site logo, we have the navigation, we have this um, image, then we'll have our headings. Um, this one is a blog post. So then it's pulling in the different blogs with a, qu a query loop. And then you have your footer down here. And then this also allows you to, um, you know, then you can go into deeper of um, getting into whoops, the different pages. So you could do a template for all the single post. You could do um, how a blog um, archive page would look. So when you write a, a bunch of posts, then all those posts have to have somewhere to kind of live. Uh, and this is a nice blog post and I move that in the wrong place. So this is just another tool that I would use to um, set that up. Uh, another thing I wanted to show was kind of inspiration, like where do I get like new ideas and stuff? Well, right now, um, we're, 
WordPress is going through a uh, update on our WordPress.org. And there's a new section that we kind of um, started last, Word, I think it was around WordCamp US last year, uh, called Showcase. And we're asking uh, companies to showcase their websites that are being um, hosted on, or being used that were that use WordPress.org. So this is another great resource to get some inspiration for maybe something a little bit different. Um, and you know, you can say to your clients, you know, well, you know, the Ray Charles Video Museum is using WordPress.org. Um, and, you know, because you might have different clients, uh, the Rolling Stone Mag, you know, publication is using WordPress. And to just look at how they are using it to get some inspiration of maybe changing it up a little bit and depending on the um, services that your client's using. Um, and it's, you know, that's the fun thing about this community is that we're willing to share things and and looking at other people's themes and seeing how they work, you know, taking a, uh, using a local site and downloading one of the free themes and looking at that to see, oh, how did they do that? Um, and excuse me, being able to take that information and then bring it to your clients as um, maybe a new feature for them. Okay. Any questions, Tracy? Uh, yeah, we have a, uh, I have to go back up to it. No problem. There it is. From Julia. It says, what do we open to start with when I open default 2024, a business page opens? Okay. We so haven't gotten basic. there yet, Julia. So we're, yeah, we're, we're still kind of in the uh, kind of, pre um, planning stages uh, of meeting with a client, deciding on, you know, like what their colors are, you know, if you're going to be doing the branding, that's like a whole nother aspect of it, uh, getting their colors and stuff like that. Um, was there anything else right now pertaining about? No. Okay. So we'll, we'll get to Julia's in a, in a little bit. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, colors. So I'm a big color person. Um, I have I, another background of mine is um, interior design and set and lighting design for the theater. Uh, so I really love different color combinations. So uh, Coolers is a uh, site that I use um, and I use the free version. So some of the tools aren't available, but it's nice to use this. Um, I might use Canva. I'll go into Pinterest and look for different color combinations that, um, and just being able to get the hex codes to those and bring those to the client um, is really beneficial of, you know, do you want this pink or do you want this pink? Uh, and uh, kind of what works for them. But I would never show, uh, one thing is to, for your client is beneficial, narrow it down. Don't show them in this whole page. Don't show them 10 different variations. Bring it down to three because it's going to overwhelm them if you show them too many options. You can always change those options, but kind of keep it at like three um, is a good thing because you can do like a light, a dark version, and then maybe a medium uh, tones with that if they're still not sure. Um, and if you need, want to narrow it down. So um, I always find uh, from my days of uh, teaching kids was, you know, narrow it down to three choices because uh, it overwhelms them otherwise. All right. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the basics of, of that, of getting that all started. And um, and just having that open conversation with the with the the client of like kind of what do they want uh, and how do they want to see it. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute because I forgot to open my local site. But give me a second here. So I'm using local today. Uh, we are uh, 
WordPress just launched the playground and I was playing with it um, yesterday and I didn't feel as comfortable with it um, because of the fact that uh, I needed to be able to save what I was going to be building. And um, I was a little confused about it. So I need a little bit more work on that aspect of it, but it's a fun tool to uh, be able to use uh, to test different things uh, on a live site. Okay. And um, I forgot to shoot, do that link. So let me get that link for a second. Um, but the playground will take you right to a WordPress dashboard, which is really cool. Um, and find you guys put that in the but um, I am using local and um, local is just a, a, a way to open up a site on my browser. Uh, it's, and be able to see that. Okay. So let's share this and make sure, let me make sure I have the site open. And you have too many windows, right? <laughs> close a couple of these windows. Um, I get rid of this. Okay, here we go. We are good to go. All right, so um, going to, uh, was, it, was it Juliana, Julia? This question about we've, um, I've created a site and through, through local and that's a whole different lesson. So um, please look at learnwordpress.org for um, that kind of information. So we have our dashboard and what, we want to do is we, uh, if we open up the site on the front end, so we're the dashboards in the back end, we see this. And what this is, is just a basic view of a blog home page. Okay. So uh, this is just to give you an idea of a way to go. You could take this and uh, go ahead and edit it and um, you would have a site running. But to go back to and this was really confusing when they started doing the block themes um, is that the difference between a template and a page, okay, or, or a post. So um, we'll go back into the dashboard and we'll go down to appearances, okay? And we are in the 2024 theme, okay? So I just want to make that clear. Now we're going to go under appearances down to the um, editor for this. Okay. And you have uh, different des uh, under design, you have the navigation styles, pages, templates, and patterns. And what, uh, from when we met with our client, uh, you know, we're just going to give them a homepage for right now. And we'll look at maybe in the next session or the third session, uh, adding some different pages and stuff. So um, a basic one page, and we want to create um, that home page. So there's two different, there's a couple different ways to do that. And that's the confusing part of it. So I want to kind of go back to um, what most people would understand um, is coming back to the dashboard and going to the pages, okay? And then add a new page. And we're gonna create the, and we have, we can do different, we can pick one of the patterns or uh, we can just leave it plain for now. So I'm just gonna leave it plain for now, just to show you what this is gonna, because there's another step that needs to be involved. 
So we want to create the home. Okay. And we're going to give it a title and I'm going to come over here. And right now I need to publish. So see this blue button up here. Um, we'll need to publish this. And click on that again. Okay. So now we have this but if you go to the front end all you see is is home there's nothing else on it okay um but now if we do here if we click here this is still on it th that blog home so we have to do one more step we'll need to go back into the back end so we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to go to, to settings and over to general and writing, reading, Read. yes, reading. So we're in the reading settings and you have to go to, um, because your last latest post, that blog home was the default. So we wanna switch it to a static page. And then our home page is gonna be that new home page that we created, okay? So you can't do this step until you've created that page that you want for your home. Uh, we don't have a post page right now, so we're just going to leave that. Make sure that you click and hit the save changes. That's always important. I always forget, sometimes forget that. So now if we go back and visit our site, we're going to open up a new link. So now our home page is with the right URL. Okay. I'm going to close a couple of these other windows. So now I want to show you that I can take my home page and add different templates. So let's go back to that home page. And I'm going to just open that here. And over on the right side, when you open up this toolbar here, so up here, there's a settings. And then we have template. Okay, so right now it's pulling the default template of pages. And we can look at that in a second. But we also have this, we can edit the template, we can swap the template, we can create a new template. Okay, so what is this template, right? So let's go in and we're gonna go back over to here and we're going to go to the appearance and remember we were in that editor and you saw that word templates so i'm going to click on the templates now this theme comes with preloaded templates okay and then there's even a couple of custom ones because i really like this page no title um, because i want to be able to add my header heading one instead of using the the title that I don't have a lot of control over. Um, so here is our pages template. So let's click on that. And this gives us a preview of what that page template looks like, okay? So what does that mean? So let's click on here. We can also click on here. And this is kind of the overall, so we don't really, we want to decide if this is how we want our pages to look, okay? Do we want all our pages to look this way? Do we want a title at the top? Do we want a, head a header at the top? I'm sorry. And then do we want a title? Do we want a featured image? And then do we want the content and the footer? So first of all, you want to start with your page templates, okay? And look at how they're going to, to be set up. So like I said, I wanted to be able to not have um, the head, the um, this title here. I wanted to be able to, um, so if I open up this group block, so this group block entails a lot because uh, this is the main content. And when we open this group up, we have a spacer at the top and then we have the title, okay? And then we have another spacer and then we, we're pulling a featured image. So, and then we have this block that's locked 
because of the fact that it's going to pull the content from that home page. Any con any page that we make, like a home, an about page, when we make that page, um, and we look at it on the front end, it'll have all the same format. And within this block, that's where all our information. We don't put the information here. We just leave this block by itself. So it's kind of magical sometimes. Um, so if I wanted to maybe take my feature image and I, I wanted it above my title. Um, so I could do something like that. Okay. And then I would save and save. Okay. So now let me go back to my that home page. I come back out to my dashboard and go to my home page. Because we want to add a featured image, don't we? Because I want to be able to see what that's look like. So we're going to do that. And we're going to insert our featured image. And always make sure uh, when you do feature when you do images to uh, add an alt text. Alt text is just a simple simple explanation of what is in the picture. Um, even if if it's a decorative image, it's always nice for somebody that might have partial vision um, to, to be able to see it. And I think it makes the experience even of a of a person without sight that um, when they see that, that um, having an explanation of what the picture is, is so important. All right, so we've put the featured image here. So now we're gonna click the update. And now we're gonna look at that page on the front end. So now we see that, remember our template, we had moved that image above the title, okay? So if that's how we want our page, our pages to look moving forward. Um, that's what's going to be. Okay. What are we doing with questions? Doing fine so far. Just a okay. comment that the alt text is is great for both SEO and accessibility. Yeah. Um, screen readers read the alt text since they can't really s say what yes. the picture is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, all right. Now I'm going to do um, a, I had one more question. Let me take a look at this real quick. Uh, so Mark, his question was, I keep hearing about the site editing and have used the block editor, but I'm still confused about how to do site-wide editing using the block editor. Okay. So let's go back to this. So under appearances, so we've met with the client. Um, we kind of have some colors. We might have a font that they want to use. And so those are things that are gonna be across the website, right? So we can set those instead of having to do them for each page, um, we can do it site-wide. So we're gonna go to appearance and we're gonna go to the editor. And under this design, we're gonna go to styles, okay? And so, uh, Here's a question for everyone uh, to answer. Which of our style combinations will we be using? We can't use the default. Is it ember, ice, fossil, maelstrom, mint, rust, or onyx? Can you add your favorite to the chat, please? Okay. 
All right, we got two for Onyx. Onyx in, is in the lead. We got three for Onyx. We're just we're just playing. I mean, it, it. I'm just trying to get it, uh, make it more interactive for everyone. Yeah, you would. Uh, you could offer um, a couple of these to your client if you know you you know that they like it the oranges or the blues and you, you know, start there to make it easier for yourself to start, start with that. Um, and then there, there's always ways to um, edit the palettes too, which is really cool. Oh, I think Maelstrom might be in the lead. No, I think Onyx has won. And then remember that this, you know, this isn't going to be the final copy too. And if like, if they're working with somebody who's like doing like a graphic designer, who's doing their branding, um, this is a great placeholder to do, you know, like when we did um, projects, a sloppy copy, right? So at least this gives you some kind of color within there um, to start with. And if you are, you know, testing things and playing around with different things on your own to learn how they work. Um, that's another thing. You can also, you know, later on, as you get comfortable, you can add your own palette of colors and remove all of these, especially if you're going to uh, give it to a company that they're going to um, be doing blog posts or something like that. Uh, you don't want to give them all of these options. So there, there's a, you know, there's a way uh, as you get more comfortable to remove all of these and just have their colors um, that they can only see. All right. All right, let's go with the Maelstrom then. So we clicked on that and uh, we're going to save that. Now up here, there is a I icon called the style book, and then there's the edit style. So either way you can go um, and click on that. You can also click over here. So like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do things on, and you just have to find what's comfortable for you. So what we have is up in the right-hand corner, we have a half moon icon and we're going to click on that. And this is our global style setting. Okay. So what we want to do is to add our colors. Now here's another way that we could look at those same styles and pick them from here. So that's the browse styles. Um, and now we can look at typography. So this theme comes with a couple of fonts. Okay, these are the defaults. And we also have this icon here, the manage fonts, where you can add fonts. And this has become really easy. Uh, so we can do two different things. We can upload or we can install. Today I'm just gonna do install because this is connecting to Google Fonts. And a majority of people use Google Fonts and it, it's the easiest for right now. So I'm going to add, I like, I'm an open sans person. I like open sans. So I, oh, I clicked on the font that I liked. Okay. Uh, and this is again, doing a little bit of research on what kind of fonts your client would like. Um, give them a couple of choices. Most websites, um, you only really need two. Uh, you need like a header and then a text one. So your heading one could be, you know, maybe a little bit on the fancier side. And then your text, since it's going to be smaller, should be, uh, you know, a little bit more readable, uh, especially with it being on the smaller. But uh, preferably for um, accessibility, it's recommended to go no smaller than 14 pixels for um, text. Now, we can pick different um, 
weights and styling. I don't need all of them, do I? So if I'm gonna use my open sans for my um, text, okay, what kind of text am I gonna need? I'm gonna need kind of a basic one and I can go with a 400 or five, you know, 500. I might wanna bold, right? Cause I might wanna pop some words. And maybe I want an, like one italics size. So I'm just going to click the ones that I really need um, because then this is another way that we can help save our database um, from blogging up too much with extra stuff that we don't really need. Uh, so I'm going to just click a couple of these. And you can always go back if you find that, oh gosh, you know, I really needed a, a, a bold italic. Uh, so you can always go back and add it later, but start with the minimum and see how that goes. So now that I clicked on that, so now I have installed fonts, all right? Um, again, we do have a lesson about uploading different fonts. Um, it takes a little bit more step stepwise to do different uh, that. So please look for that video um, within learnwordpress.org for that. How are we on questions? Yeah, can I ask something? Yeah. That, that was the one comment I was going to make that one person asked whether or not they could ask a verbal question. Right, right. So can I be heard? I, I don't, don't know. Yeah. Um, can you wait till, till I, I'm, I'm finished first? And sure, then we'll, absolutely. We'll, 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 op we'll open the floor up. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, Global Styles, uh, we're setting up our fonts, okay? So now we have these different fonts that we can choose from. And again, you can open this and go to that library. And if for some reason you don't want to use the defaults, you can go in and get rid of them, okay? Uh, and as you get into finishing up your client's site, that's something that you would want to do because your client's not going to use these, right? So remove any unnecessary things um, within there. Now you want to go in and look at the different uh, text elements. So we have our text, um, I'm sorry, links, headings, and captions. So I'm just going to look at one or two of these. And so we have our basic text. And so I want to change that to, I'm going to do, the cardio is the default. So I'm just going to keep that as the default. Um, so I can either do cardio or I can hit, hit the default. Now the heading, I said that I wanted open source, open sans. So I'm going to do that. You can even get as um, detailed as different headings for different. So like if I wanted an H1 to maybe be on the, um, the bold, but then my H2, I would rather have it be um, open sans and just uh, the regular or medium. Uh, this is where you can do that. I wouldn't get as like detailed and do like every single one, but, um, and then click to make sure that you save because then you get an, another window. So it's almost like, like two saves. So you're saving the, the update that you made, but then you're also saving the global style. So you see that the custom style, the heading one and two, um, was changed. Uh, so I double checked on that. All right. Um, and then we have, I'm going to do captions because I have that italic. So I'm going to click on that open sans and I want to do the, um, the italic for that. Okay. So those are the things that you can kind of set up beforehand. Uh, there's also an option to do the font for buttons. So if you wanted to pick one of these for the buttons, 
Okay, in that. So I'm going to go back out. And thank you. Um, thank you everyone for the questions. I know that people are answering them in the comments too. So that is, is very helpful too. Um, and then you also have your colors. So remember we picked this and it, um, this palette and it has five colors. So say that you wanted to have um, one of the colors you didn't you didn't like. Okay, so maybe this um, this background was like too dark. So what we can do is we can go in and change that to a lighter blue. So see how that's changing. Yeah, we don't want to go gray though. <laughs> there we go. We want a lighter lighter blue. So I can change that. I can also click on these three dots for color options and show details. So this is really fun. And especially if you are doing a client site where you're picking the colors, knowing this information about the theme that you're using is important. Um, uh, different themes have different ways of labeling their colors. So some will have more colors, some will, and, and different palettes too. There's, there's some palettes that might have more colors and stuff. So knowing how it's named is important too. So I kind of took a look, I took, take a little graph and I put the names next to it. And then I put my, um, my uh, hex codes. So I know that base is this hex code, base two is this hex code. And I know which, and then I'm like, okay, what is base used for? Base is used for the background of, a, of this. What else is that base color used for? Is it used as a button color? Is it used for, you know, can I use it as a font? So knowing what those specific things are for is, is um, helps a lot. Okay. We can also add uh, a custom color if we wanted to do, you know, a, an extra color there. We can add some custom colors. You can even do, um, you can remove all the custom colors and uh, we can add different opacities to those colors too. Thank you again, everyone for coming. And uh, thank you to um, all of my experts within the field that have helped um, answer questions for people. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. To view more learning materials, please visit learn.wordpress.org.